Hello everyone, welcome to our Inspired by Nature Summit. Our intention of this summit is to inspire people to stay active at any age and enjoy the outdoor activity to the fullness. And today, 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 we are luckily to have a great speaker to joining us. His name is PJ Dixon. PJ, he's really a lifelong motivation speaker. Or of course, he's an international well-known transformational coach and focus on results. And PJs have a tons of a great set of rewards from all over the US and uh, despite of his disability, which is, was expected to take his life by seven, but he chose to live and live well. Mm -hmm. And he have an extraordinarily amazing life. And you know, he's a big fan of the outdoor which is, I mean, I can name his list. Have he done so many things about outdoor? Like he have done like hiking, sky, I mean, skydiving, sailing, skiing. Oh man, the list can go on and on and on. <laughs> but I know PJ is always just outdoor, connected with the nature. And he also is a foremost uh, wheelchair athlete. And he just was included in the National Hall of Brains with the disability. He, but he also done so many things for the charity. He had farms like the four, this neighbor like sport program and also as two nonprofits. So today we are so lucky to have PJ to joining us to speak in our summit. So PJ, welcome. Thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here. You're right. I do love nature. I love being outside. I love the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And so for me, any opportunity to go outside, I definitely jump at that. So yeah. it's my honor to be here. Wow. Yeah. PJ, like, so it's such an honor to having you. Like you said, just like the way the shirt you read, you read is like a red, you know, peach. That for me, like a spring color. So I can really tell. <laughs> I wore this specifically for you, actually, oh! because I do. I love the bright colors, bright yellow and this and orange. Yes. Definitely my favorite colors because oh. they're bright, they're vibrant and yes. definitely sort of that spring summer feel. Yeah. Normally I'd wear like a, a long sleeve with like a button up, you know, very <laughs> trying to be uh, at least somewhat professional. And I thought. Oh. If we're outside, we're not wearing long sleeves yeah, and whatnot, yeah, you know, yeah. unless we're snow skiing or something like that. So mm -hmm. I thought that I'd be a little more casual and make it accessible, <laughs> right? Accessible. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So PJ, I know in spite of your disability and uh -huh. you've chosen to live such an amazing active mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. So how and why did you do this? Because lots of people with your city, similar that situation, they might feel like a depression. True. They might also choose to feel like life that's it. But you choose the opposite way and live like extraordinary, which yes. is what inspired you to stay active like this. Share with us about that. So I've always had a really, a pretty good life. You know, of course, everybody has a little bit of bumps and rocky road, a little bit on the way. But I was only expected, like you said, to live until I was seven. So my mom always encouraged me to do anything I wanted. So we were raised, my sister and I were raised in a household where you couldn't say can't. My mom would say, can't doesn't live here. And we say, but I can. She would say, can't never did a thing. And she would say, keep trying, keep trying. And so there were times when like at nine and 10 years old, I would call to my mom and I would say, okay, mom, I'm ready for you to help me get buttoned and zipped and tucked in, you know, in the mornings. So I get my little self dressed as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And then I'd yell for help. And she would yell back, okay, you keep trying. I'm busy. And then I would struggle and fight and try to get my shirt tucked in and work on zipping my zipper. And my little fingers didn't work hardly uh, very good at all and try to snap my snaps and button my buttons and all of this. And finally, I'd get everything done and be about eight or nine minutes. And I'm, uh, uh, you know, exhausted and just putting in so much effort. And my mom would be sitting in her bedroom crying mm -hmm. because she wanted to come and help me. But she knew that I'd already lived two or three years longer than I was supposed to. And if she kept helping me, I would never live the freedom and the lifestyle that she wanted for me to live. And so she would sit in her bedroom, cry for 10 minutes, wipe her eyes, blow her nose, take a deep breath and walk across and like open her bedroom door and walk across the uh, hallway to my bedroom. And she'd look in and I'd be, you know, sort of tucked in and buttoned in, mostly zipped up. And she'd say, oh, you didn't need my help. You got it all by yourself. And I would say, I can do it myself, mommy. And she'd turn and walk away. 
not in a mean way, but she knew that if she stayed where I was frustrated because of, I had to get angry, I had to get frustrated, I had to get like more energized because anger and frustration create, um, create energy. So I had to build up that energy so that I could find a way to get zipped up and tucked in and buttoned you know, and then at the end of that, because I did, I was like, I can do it myself, mommy. You know, there's this whole idea that um, there's this freedom in power. Mm-hmm. And so what I found was, I, you know, this was back in the day when I was a kid and we didn't play video games and we went outside and played with the neighbors and we, would, we could play all around the neighborhood. And then mm-hmm. when it uh, got dark, our parents would be like, PJ, dinner's ready, you know, and I would yell back, okay, you know, and I'm like two blocks away, down the street, around the corner on my little skateboard, um, because I would skate. I also skateboarded, you know, I'd sit on my shins and ride down a hill and turn a corner and, you know, um, I would always wear out the little toes on my shoes from dragging my my toes, Um, but I was living life. And so I was never stopped from living my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there was this idea that, yeah, you want to do it, go and try it. You want to snow ski, go and try it. You want to sled, go and try it, right? My mom, it doesn't mean that my mom wasn't scared. It means that she wouldn't let the fear stop me from living a life that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so my grandmother was slightly different though. My grandmother would say to my mom, how are you going to let PJ do that? What if he dies? And I've done crazy things. Like I've had my friends hang me over the edge of the Grand Canyon by my wrists and drop me. And to my other friend who's two and a half or three feet below me standing on a 14 inch ledge and he caught me, right? And then he pulled me up to his chest, squeezed us between two big rock surfaces and walked out on this ledge, slipped on some loose gravel, fell on his back and his butt and we slid to the very edge and his feet and ankles went over. That's living. When you face death every day, life gets juicy and delicious. And I'm not suggesting that people have to face death. That's crazy talk. Don't be like me. That's not smart right but that's part partially the way i live like my mom said to my grandmother in response to when my grandmother said why what do you why do you let pj do that what if something happens to him what if he dies my mom says if pj dies he dies doing something he loves and he dies with friends Mm -hmm. and that's why i live the lifestyle that i live because my mom ingrained in me from the very beginning can't doesn't live here Mm -hmm. and you can do anything that you want anything you set your mind to and go out get outside and play get out of the house go do something and so I went out and we found activities we found adventure I remember the first time my one of my friends put me on his back and piggybacked me across a a log that had been that had fallen over a cavern and I was like okay and I I tightened up you know I'd done some some cool stuff in the past but I tightened up because I was nervous he's like dude you need to relax like we're not gonna fall it's okay I was like, I've never done this. And this is the same guy that dropped me over the edge of the Grand Canyon. You know, so at some point, there's like this next level. That was really fun. Let me do this. And the next level, that was really fun. Let me do this. You know, it's like some people don't even want to get out of the house because they're a little bit afraid. Yeah. And yet, if they go to like just a backyard barbecue, Mm. they're like, wow, that was really fun. You know, and they play maybe some cornhole or some darts or some, uh, some other yard game. And they have a good time. What do they want to do? They want to go and do it again. So it's about finding the dopamine dumps, finding the things in life that bring joy Mm -hmm. into your life and doing that. It Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be jumping out of planes, snow skiing, water skiing, although I'm not a very good water skier. Apparently, you're supposed to ski on top of the water. I (laughs) ski under the water. I'm not super duper good at water skiing. Um, But it's on my future. It's on my list to to try again at some point. That's part of the thing you do, like lovely sharing, just like you said, the people always said, the can doesn't live here. But still, the people will sometimes say, oh, I, but how, how do I get over the fear, like, you know, of getting active mm-hmm. out, outside? Because lots of people, they, when they said they're having their fears, like, like, so I might be get hurt, um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know whether, it's just like, I don't have that, I, I can, you know, just like those kind of things. But, but still, like, what is a couple of the stuff people can take to just get over the fear? take the first step. You know, yeah, you, you know, the first step is like to look inside, like what's stopping you? Because everything, when I look at my future, I look at my future and I see as if I'm looking out the window of an airplane. Mm-hmm. I see so much ground. I see so much sky. I see so much horizon. And I see this open opportunity. And 
That's because I've done a lot of transformation work. I've looked at stuff from my past and I said, okay, what's holding me back? What am I afraid of? What am I nervous about? And then I section out my brain. Like the, the first time I ever went zip lining, yeah. uh, I was nervous. I was worried. I was scared. I was hanging from this wire, like over this, you know, this cavern, not cavern, this big, like huge drop. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm literally just hanging there. I'm not strapped to anybody. I'm like almost upside down. I'm sort of falling out of the, the harness, you know, and I was like, I, if I want to do this stuff, I have to get past my brain. So the brain takes a particular process. Um, it goes a particular route. And if yeah, that route goes through fear, you get to move that fear. You get to section that fear out. You get to drive around the fear. I take the fear and I go, oh, I feel it. Okay, but I don't want it to control me. So I put the fear in a different part of my brain. Mm-hmm. I just move the fear and I go, okay, sure, I'm afraid, but this is what I want to do. And so I make that a priority. So mm-hmm. I prioritize the, the action, the activity that I want to do mm-hmm. more than I prioritize the fear. Most people instead, they prioritize the fear. Mm-hmm. And the way they prioritize the fear is they think about it. They, they analyze it. They think about what could happen. Mm-hmm. What's, what are people going to say? So this idea of if you're afraid to even get out of the house, but you're listening to this and you want to, why not just open the blinds? Why not just open the windows? Let's let some of the breeze come in. Why not get a glass of your favorite drink, lemonade maybe, and go sit in the backyard and just listen to the sound of the birds? Why not go out there and and do a little meditation, a little prayer, right? What if you really, what if getting out of your house is not a problem, but like going on that adventure, like you want to go on that hike or that camping trip with a family member or a friend, but you're a little nervous, you're afraid. What about bugs? What about snakes? Uh, I'm not a big fan of snakes either, right? I don't want to be stung by a scorpion or stung by a bee. Like I was teaching martial arts this morning and one of my students, he's a 14 year old boy and he's capturing bees in his hand. And I was like, you're not afraid to get stung? And he's like, no, I've never been stung. I've been capturing bees for like four years or something like that. And I was like, really? Show me. And of course he gets stung. And I was like, <laughs> that's the first time he's ever been stung. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Like, he's like, oh, I got stung. Oh, okay. That hurts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we took a credit card and scraped it out so we wouldn't squeeze the additional um, venom inside. Mm-hmm. And he was like very calm about it because it happened, but it wasn't everything. He didn't have to melt down. He wasn't going to lose his life. It was just a sting. It just hurt mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So instead, what if we focus on like the enjoyment. Why do you like nature? What is it that you like about it? What happens in your being? What happens in your mind? What happens in your heart? Like if you're out, do you calm down? Is it as if, gosh, I feel like I can breathe. I'm away from the phone. I'm away from my computer. I'm away from my job. Maybe you're away from a a relationship that's not very healthy for you. Maybe it's just not healthy in that moment. You're struggling, but you get outside and you walk and it's like you can you can breathe and you can think easier. And it's almost like, let me think about it for just a minute. You get outside, I get outside. And it's like, I become alive from the outside. It's not just alive on the inside. It's also as if life from the outside is infusing me. It's pouring into me from the outside and I'm pouring into the life from the inside of me out. Mm -hmm. And so it's this relationship that you have with the wind. Mm-hmm. It's this appreciation you have for the sun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I live in Tucson right now, and there's this tree called the sweet acacia. And it's like this mystery. You almost never see the sweet acacia tree. And I don't know why. Maybe I don't know what it looks like. Yeah. But it has, like, I think it has these fuzzy little yellow balls on it mm-hmm. <clears throat> during spring, during April. Yeah. And when you're out, And all of a sudden, the smell of the sweet acacia or jasmine or lilac wafts through the air and goes right across your nose. Mm, Everything washes away and there's only the presence of the sweet, sweet smell of the flower. Mm. That's bliss. That's the gift of nature back to you. Everything washes away. All the stress, all the fear, all the sadness, all the worry, all the doubt. That's why I get outside. Yeah, <clears throat> that's beautiful the way, like PJ. And you said people sometimes we always just like uh, just relax, take a moment, just breathe, like you know, mm-hmm. like uh, feel the breeze, like uh, just touching your face, like mm-hmm. and hear the birds sounding. 
but people will also like ask like oh yeah i'm i, I am interesting to stay active but i've just been a little bit timid because lots of people like you know so how how when they're feeling timid but they're feeling doing it but timid then how to do that little push you know not say but how that little push let them to get into the pro something sure, about sure like maybe they want to go zip lining but they're a little bit afraid <laughs> right okay <laughs> I'm right I'm ah! <laughs> um i would say stop for a minute and really have a conversation with yourself mm -hmm. because the unconscious mind and the conscious mind are actually supposed to be best friends mm -hmm. but what happens is the unconscious mind, when the conscious mind doesn't make decisions, mm -hmm. the unconscious mind, like a child that doesn't have good parenting, runs crazy and amok. And mm -hmm. so the unconscious mind will create all of these fears, all of these worries, and it will create paralysis mm -hmm. because the unconscious mind is running from its fight or flight process. What I would refer to the, the protection protocol. It's saying, hey, this could be scary, this could happen, this could hurt, you could be embarrassed here. What if the, the line breaks? And think about all the possible dangers. Mm -hmm. The unconscious mind, the good news is that if you're a little afraid, it's because your mind is working perfectly well, okay? So instead, when that happens, stop for a moment. I run what's called a release protocol. Mm -hmm. A release protocol is the moment that I start to feel any kind of tension, fear, worry, nervousness, or doubt, mm -hmm. I immediately go, okay, what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? And then I picture it. I say, what does it look like? And for example, I might feel, um, I might feel like a little nervousness, a little bit of worry, and I stop and I go, okay, what does it look like? So I change it from just a feeling to a visual, okay? And so the moment I change it to, this is my release protocol. So when people are nervous or worried, but they want to do something anyway, anything in their life, whether it's zip lining, jumping out of planes, Mm -hmm. walking up and asking somebody if they would go out on a date with them. It doesn't matter. Find a release protocol, create a release mm -hmm. protocol. Mm -hmm. So this is mine. Okay. So what happens is I immediately, once I start feeling that nervousness, that fear, that worry, I, I go, okay, what does that look like? Where is it? All right. And what does it feel like? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Where is it? How is it moving? So I might feel this big black, um, tar shiny tar like substance on my back that's wrapping these tendrils around my chest and i can feel it tense uh, the tension in my chest and i go mm -hmm. oh that's why i feel the tension in my chest because it's running these rivers around my around my chest and it's squeezing my chest so i can't breathe mm -hmm. what's really going on is the tension the fear the nervousness the worry in my mind mm -hmm. is creating muscle tension in my body but i'm creating a visual so i go oh now i know what i'm combating and then i freeze everything and go stop because those tendrils, those little streams are running from my heart and I can't let them get to my heart. Mm -hmm. I need to, uh, David Goggins is a former, former Navy SEAL and he talks about winning the war in the morning. Mm -hmm. Which is by winning the war in the morning is he's talking about wake up in the morning and do all the hard stuff first. Mm -hmm. So I borrowed his term, winning the war in the morning, and I, I will always give him credit for it because I love the term and I don't have a better term yet. So, um, what I mean by winning the war in the morning is the moment that I feel it, I go, okay, stop. Mm -hmm. Because I don't let that emotion, that feeling, that nervousness, that fear, that worry move into the afternoon or into the evening or into midnight because then I'll be overwhelmed with fear. I'll be overwhelmed with sadness. I'll be overwhelmed with depression. So the moment I feel it, that's the morning. I go, okay, now is the time to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So I visualize what I'm feeling. Then I stop everything. That's when I, I run my protection product or my, uh, my empowerment, um, uh, exercise. Okay. So the empowerment exercise is part of my release protocol. It's encompassed. So the release protocol starts with feeling it, seeing it, stopping it. Then I step out of my body, not physically because I'm in a wheelchair. I'm a tiny, skinny, little 75 pound dude. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I see myself step out of my body with my right leg. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm pulling my left leg out, I spin around so I can see the essence of me in my wheelchair. But I don't see myself anymore. I see essence, but I do see these black tendrils, mm -hmm. right? I do see this shiny black, uh, slimy, tar-like substance making a run for my heart. And it's all frozen in time. So that's when I look at it and I smile and I start to laugh. So this is the important piece right here, 
right? You don't have to do all the first part. You can just do this piece, this piece. Smile at it and laugh about it and go, ah, you ain't no ninja. I see you trying to sneak up on me. I see you trying to make me afraid. I see you trying to paralyze me. I see you trying to cause me to run away. I see you causing me to be mean to people because I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I see you causing me to like get quiet and shy and nervous. I see what you're trying to do and just smile and go, but it doesn't work because that's not what I really want. Mm -hmm. What I really want is this. And remember earlier I said that the unconscious mind and the conscious mind should be best friends. Yeah. The unconscious mind is allowing the protection protocol to run that mm -hmm. fight or flight process. And what I'm doing is telling you to turn on the conscious mind to say, look, I see what you're trying to do, but no, you don't get to make that decision. I make that decision, mm -hmm. right? This is what I want. No, I want to do this zip line. No, I want to go out on that date. No, I want to go for that hike. No, I want to go on that camping trip. This is what I want to do. And you say whatever you need to say, laugh however you need to laugh, feel that sense of empowerment, and then step back into your body and run that em empowerment exercise again. So for me, I might say, oh, I see you starting to sneak up on me. You ain't no ninja. I know exactly what you're doing. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know this is what I want. This is where I'm going to go. Yes, I'm scared but that's not going to paralyze me. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And if I hear my mind say, yeah, but what if this happens, this happens, this happens. And I go, then we'll deal with that. But until then, this is what I want. And this is the way I'm going to go. And then I step back in my body. I sit down and I say, look, this is what I want. This is the way I'm going to go. This is where I am, who I am. I know I might be afraid, but this is what I'm going to do. And I'm excited about it. And I change it from fear to mm -hmm. excitement, right? Because fear lives in a particular place in the body. You're going to feel the nervousness, the tingling <laughs> sensation, maybe yes. in the pit of your stomach, the top of your lungs, in your throat, maybe, right? But then exercise or uh, uh, excitement is very similar you might feel that in the same place so i then move that energy into the excitement phase which is right in the center of my chest i get excited and i say yep this is what i'm going to do so i run my empowerment exercise a couple two or three times mm -hmm. and then boom i go okay let's go i'm going to do it everything washes away because the unconscious mind is the only reason you're having the fear is because the conscious mind is allowing it to happen mm -hmm. the moment the conscious mind says yeah that's i can recognize that we're feeling fear but this is what I want to do anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. And all of a sudden, the con unconscious mind goes, okay, you're the boss of me. Okay, I <laughs> so trust you. It seems yeah. like both of them, like, you know, like a twin brother, you know, they can having that, that conversation like uh, all day long. <laughs> Let me just That's, stop. Exactly. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly how I see it. Exactly how I see it, yeah. Like I see it a little bit more like my sister and me, right? Yes. And she used to say to me, you're not the boss of me. That would be like the unconscious mind. And I would say, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing what I, what I wanted to do anyway. That's, that's not, not a question that like brought me up to like because of this conscious or unconscious. But I know like TJ, you have three calling card called you know peace, love, and persistence. So how how does this three calling card to playing that key role for us to to doing the things we want and to unblock the fear and then let us to do the thing? Sure. Yeah. If you're not living with authenticity. If you're not living from the truth inside of your heart, inside of your soul, inside of your body, inside of your mind, if you're not living from there, you won't be in peace. The word agony, we, meet, we feel like all kinds of pain and suffering. But if you look at the root of the word agony, agon, it means to be at war with. So if you are in agony, you are at war with yourself. So when you say, actually, my authenticity, this is what I really want, and I'm going to do it anyway, <clears throat> all of a sudden that fear starts to dissipate, starts to go away. And when you live that life from that honest sense inside of you, all of a sudden that sense of peace comes because you're not at war with yourself. You're not doubting yourself. You're not denying yourself. Most people deny themselves. They're like, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not fast enough. I don't, you know, I'm not pretty enough. I, I don't have the education. I don't know how to do that. I'm worried, what if I fail, right? All of these crazy things. So instead, stop for a moment and go, okay, look, what do I really truly want? Who am I really? I really want this. The moment you step towards that, the moment you say, okay, then let's go that way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. could be a little scary. But the moment you move in that direction, the closer and closer and closer and closer you get, the more and more and more joy. You might get a little more fear, but the more and more joy. And once you do it, the relaxation comes and the, there's that sense of peace because you've overcome any kind of little bit of worry or doubt, you might still have some worry and doubt. That's no problem. You know, you can like, there's something I call unpacking the emotions mm -hmm. where we can 
extract the knowledge and the wisdom from those uncomfortable emotions. So the moment you start to honor that authenticity is the moment you start to find peace, yeah. right? Love comes from the actual, like, oh my God, I love that. That was so much fun. I actually did that. And persistence is that idea of, look, this is something that I want. And so I see it and I'm going to go after it. Now, let me make it a clear distinction between persistence and perseverance. Because if you look in the dictionary, they have almost the exact same definition. But for me, I define them different. Perseverance is I can suffer and deal with and, and hold uh, on to and hang in there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It may not be pleasant and it's not going to be peaceful. But if I'm persistent and I'm like, then I'm like the spear tip. I'm like, that's what I want. That's where I'm going. And boom, I move in that direction. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when I start moving, like I'm getting chills up my spine and in my own heart, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's what I want. That's where I'm going. And boom, I take action. I literally get chills up my spine. My heart starts to tingle. My body starts to engage. Like all of a sudden, my masculinity turns on. And I go, boom, okay, I'm going to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. I, get, I, I get like excited. Right? And when I get excited, any of that fear starts to go away. And the closer I get to it, the more I do it, there's a sense of peace because the confidence comes. When I persist towards what I want and I get what I want, there's a sense of confidence and confidence lends itself to peace. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in that space of peace, what's left but love? And then you persist again. There's no beginning point and there's no end because it's a perfect circle. They all support each other. Yeah, like you said, the peace, the love, and persistence, they, they support each other. That also we call, if you're having like a journey, we always said you have a friend's buddy, like a come around, like this three buddy, they just be like a, along, like a, to keep on this life's journey and, and keep spy, inspiring people. That's mm -hmm. how the beautiful the way you're sharing, PJ. And I know, PJ, like, you know, we are so lovely to want you to share more, but we always say every speaker get to have some free gift to our audience to keep going listen to us so <laughs> what would be your free gift of the day for our audience uh Okay, can I say one more thing about persistence? Yeah, sure, sure. Is that okay? Just one more thing. I just get so excited. I have so much to share. Um, so I, if I could show you my elbows, but I can't. Let me try real quick. Okay, I have um, sort of, I don't know if you can see that. It's healing pretty good, right? You can see that it's sort of a little bit of a, a scab right there. Um, I push my own manual wheelchair in doctors are like, you shouldn't be able to push your own wheelchair. But I do anyway, because the more I persist, the more it inspires everybody else. People go, wow, if that little man can do it, I can do it. And that's what I want, right? I want people to have that experience where they're like, oh, I'm inspired. I want to keep going. And mm -hmm. so we keep going, not because of the body. We keep going because of our thinking. And mm -hmm. so anytime we quit, it has nothing to do with the body. It has everything to do with the mind, yeah. right? I can be in pain. And I can smile at it and go, this makes me feel alive. But you don't have to be in pain to persist. You can persist and say, you know what? I feel like I've done enough today and I feel good about that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the next step tomorrow. So don't feel like you have to do everything in one day. Mm -hmm. But instead, just don't quit. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. don't quit. Okay? So you asked me about the free gift too, yes? Oh, yes. Oh. Um, we, 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 ne we never quit until like, we're here. <laughs> Right. We never had to over here. I love that. We never quit until we're here. So I love my gift. There's so many people out there that give free PDFs uh, of their, of their book or free downloads of their, um, mm -hmm. of their, uh, their meditations, all that's juicy and delicious and wonderful. And I love that. And I love any kind of gift, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a simple touch or a smile from somebody or an actual physical gift or, you know, the gift of being able to hear the laughter of a child. Mm -hmm. So for me, though, the gift that I like to give is that I know that there's some people that are in their life and they're just sort of feeling stuck. And I don't want you to live in that way. I don't live in that way. So I want you to find this freedom. So I allow myself to give out free 20 minute calls where you can actually check in with me and talk to me about what's really going on with you. So you get to have one on one dialogue with me to figure out, gosh, this is where I'm struggling. Great. What, let's get this thing out of your way. Because I always say this. Seek not to love more, but instead to remove the obstacles separating you from love. Mm. It's the anchor that's holding you back. And the truth is, it's not even the anchor. It's the limiting belief. It's the cord, the line, the chain, the link that you've tied to that belief system. 
right? It's the belief that you've carried forward with you. So if you're interested, mm -hmm. or if any of your audience is interested in saying, you know what, I'm really struggling, but I don't want to struggle anymore, mm -hmm. reach out. Let's talk for 20 minutes and see what we can do to help you release some of that and move you in the right direction. Wow, what a general gift you are. PJ, offering to our audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Like audience, we said, nothing is just so be inspired from having a talk because we always sometimes we say the talk it's worth thousands it's just like if I reading anything because the talk is the communication so please do grab and PJ this general good you know we can wait to having that but overall thank you so much PJ for joining our summit today which is just thank you so much it was my pleasure and you know what I believe that there's a saying by Rumi that says what you seek is seeking you and if you're seeking peace or love or solace or the ability to actually breathe the desire to release tension mm -hmm. all of that is seeking you nature is one of the best ways to do that mm -hmm. return to wholeness and nature helps you return to your wholeness just step outside and breathe feel the sun feel gratitude and take that next step take that next step take that next step wow. go on that white water river raft climb that mountain yeah. right go on that camping trip where you're dirty and greasy and gross yeah. and you might see no. a scary snake ah right don't be afraid that's why it's, that's part of the nature but overall like so what you're seeking as you're already seeking you so yeah nature is already seeking you nature is yeah. already calling you so yeah. audience stay tuned we have more great speaker to come and without further ado also be sure you guys have a good day like so nature is calling you guys out so stay active and outdoor and enjoy it to the fullness Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.